Good afternoon and good morning if you're in New Zealand. Uh, my name is Chris McHale. I have Chris T with me as well. Hello. Uh, we were supposed to have a special guest today. Unfortunately, her flight got pushed forward and it was right around the time that the webinar was on. So we're going to reschedule her for the next one in two weeks. But we are still going to be discussing SEO, uh, great tactics on how to use SEO, how to take advantage of it and make sure that your site stands out for Google, specifically for three different areas of your site. Or uh, I'll be talking about uh, Instafarm pages and how they function and how the SEO tool works there. I'll also be talking about our new released uh, tool for the vendor, the preferred vendors page, as well as Chris will be kind of diving into the blog section and how to use all of our archive blogs that come fresh out of the box. If you're a longtime member, you have these as well. Um, and Chris is going to take advantage and, and show you how those work as well as the SEO tool in the blog editor because it does change a little bit compared to the blog or the SEO tool across the board. Um, with that said, we'll go ahead and dive right into it. I'm going to turn my screen share on. Let's see. Chris, can you see that? Uh, yes, sir. Awesome. Thank you, sir. So a lot of websites, and actually this is still hasn't changed. I did a Mikhail's Minute yesterday on how to pop your site with color and vibrancy for springtime. It's a really good thing, good time to do that with everybody starting to look at the sites. Um, with that said, the next thing that I want to focus in on is SEO before I get really, really busy with selling and helping people purchase homes. I'm going to scroll down to the very, very bottom and I'm going to go to the admin login button. And this is going to take me to my login page, which everybody's familiar with. It has saved my cookies, so it's automatically going to log me in. This is the dashboard of the site. One of the biggest and best ways to get traffic to your website is using something called the Instafarm page app. And most people are very familiar with how it works. The cool thing too is that we do offer our expertise on it. We do $100 a page where we actually fill the form out. We give you all the content that's necessary and needed. Um, we search for images for the area and we do some research and actually interview you about what makes the area special and attach that information. Mm. With that said, I want to show you guys how you can do it to save yourself some cash if you wanted to do it yourselves or just kind of dabble with good SEO practice and how it functions and works on your site. Um, we're going to go to the app section and scroll down to Instafarm. When we go to the Instafarm page section here, there's only going to be just this one uh, just because it's the demo site. We recommend five to 10 featured areas for your website. Uh, that's a really, really good sweet spot for Google. It's a really, really good sweet spot for you as far as time is concerned. We have had some agents who, what was the highest number that we saw? We just talked about it yesterday. Um, oh yeah, it was like 300. 300, yeah, 300. Yeah. People have done 300 farm pages and just totally maxed out their SEO with these things. Obviously, that's a superstar person. That person should probably be spending time selling houses a little bit more too. But the more the merrier, but definitely pick five to 10 that you really want to focus in on that you really know the area well and type up the information for it. In this case, we're going to just do a create a new Instafarm page just so you get the idea of what a blank slate looks like. When you do load up the new Instafarm page editor, uh, we have updated this so that there are templates for you to choose as well. Uh, and I like to go to the right-hand side first and kind of get this stuff out of the way before I start filling in the form. So the first thing that I'd want to do is choose my specific template. This is not going to change SEO by any means. It's just kind of more of a visual preference. It's up to you. The modern, the modern Instafarm one's my favorite. It pulls up a really cool looking map uh, from Google. Google will probably reward you, but it's, it's a very small minuscule amount um, for that map to appear on the top of the page. Uh, we'll get to the SEO score bar here in a minute. Um, but as we scroll down, there is an, uh, an area for your featured image. So that's the header image at the very top of the page, if it's the classic one. And you can actually set the featured image by clicking the link, finding your image in your media. Or if you can't find one, you can always go to the Pixabay images and find a regular stock photo for, this, for the page as well. Um, I'm going to use this one of the Southwestern door, and I'm going to set that as my featured image. So now that that's done. And then over here, we just have all the basic tools that are set up for the entire page. You can save the draft. You can always preview your edits or changes that you've done on the left-hand side. And then it's also going to update and let you know what's going on here. Um, this will change instead of ready to grab a lease site, it should say publish. And that's when that page is officially live on your site or connected to your site. 
The other important thing as well, there are two or three, depending on which uh, template you choose, call to actions on the template. Uh, one of them can be for home valuations. The other one can be, you know, enter in, or you have a question about the area, enter in your information. You can set up a custom path so that the entire thing is automated, which I really recommend that you do for these pages. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna do Chris, because that's the one I had created through Wise Agent. Um, and this is going to be specifically for buyers who are asking questions to me. I'll give them a nice little newsletter that I've created as a drip campaign or something like that. So now I have a custom path set for this Instafarm page. If you notice, there's no more tools on the right hand side for me to mess with. So we're already a quarter of the way done with creating this page, which is really, really neat. I'm going to enter a title. And then all I'm gonna simply do is just kind of cruise down the line here and just fill out the information that I have on hand. So the city and state's pretty easy, just did that. If I have a YouTube video of the area, I definitely wanna use that. Video content's gonna keep people engaged on the site. It's really, 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 really good for SEO. Um, it's, you know, especially if it's from YouTube, Google owns YouTube, so the more you're using their product, the happier they're gonna be because they're making money off of it and they'll reward you accordingly. Now with YouTube videos themselves, if it's not your video, always ask for permission to use it and if they say no, do not copy and paste it in here, otherwise you'll get a really nasty letter in the mail uh, with a cease and desist. Make sure that uh, you do add video content to your site and don't be scared to do it yourself. Every, every person starts somewhere. The video may be really, really crappy. You may think it is. It may be a crappy video, but who cares? It's on there. People are viewing it. They're looking at you. They're matching a, a voice and movement and a face with the name of the company, which is ultimately the end goal. So a YouTube video is always going to be the king or queen uh, of content. So I always recommend adding a YouTube video link. I'm not gonna add one here just because I don't have one. Um, you can always come back and edit these pages later and add them and, later. Go ahead. Sorry, just, just to chime in, if you guys, um, and, and sorry if I missed this when you were talking here, but if you, you don't have to add a unique one for every page. Right. As long as you just have a general one on each one, that's that does really well in terms of, um, you know, kind of pumping that SEO juice. Uh, Google loves to see video on a page. It's just such a universal medium nowadays. Um, so not a bad idea. Even if it's a simple one, just get it on there. We've had we've seen agents and, and that's a good point, Chris. We've seen agents just strap a GoPro to the hood of their car and drive around because the, the road yeah. is a place to film. Um, and just drive around and then in the background kind of voice over what's kind of cruising around the area. It takes 10 minutes to do a video like that. Super simple, super easy, and you're using it for each neighborhood or like Chris said, you're using the same one per, for the area if it's if it's pertainable. Um, so definitely do that. Thank you for bringing that up, Chris. You're 100% right. The next thing, this is a very important part that people tend to forget when they are building their Instafarm pages. The menu name and the add to menu button is what's gonna automate the process of getting this Instafarm page on the featured area dropdown on your header menu, as well as the list of featured areas in the footer, depending on which footer template you choose. So in this case, I am gonna fill this out again. I know it's kind of redundant information, but some people may just create a farm page for pool properties and they don't really want it on their page. They may be using it for a landing page, an advertisement or a, or a newsletter or something like that. So if you don't want this page to appear on your homepage, make sure that this little box is not checked. If you do want this to pop up on your homepage, you wanna add it to your menu. It's super simple, it's super easy, and then you're done. You don't have to worry about going into the settings in the upper right-hand corner of your site and then fiddling around with the, with the menu structure. It does it automatically for you, which is really, really neat. The next thing is a community title and subtitle. Um, this one kind of has people struggle with it as well. I actually put the city name and then in the subtitle, I do a little catchy phrase that the city's known for or the, or the state. I think Rio Ranch is the city of vision, isn't it? There you go. So, yeah, Rio so. it was at one point the tech capital of New Mexico, Intel's here, things like that. So they named it the city of vision. Um, but if you do have a catchy little title for the neighborhood, put it in here, add some flair to it, add some great little content. It's nice, it's easy to do, super, super simple. I'm gonna head over to Wikipedia really quick. Uh, and just grab some information. Don't do what I'm doing. I'm just trying to show you how the uh, how the information uh, loads over to the SEO score bar um, when you start typing up when you start typing stuff up. Wikipedia is a really great resource for you folks. It's going to give you really good stats about the housing, um, the you know the market, the average, you know how much it costs to live here, the unemployment rate, how safe it is, things like that. 
Um, I'm just copying and pasting this over for an example. Don't do this. Uh, make sure you're adding your own flair. You can definitely use this content, but you definitely want to type over some other information. But if you notice, it's saying to, for me to write 200 words explaining to the readers why this community is so special. Let's pretend I typed this. I've got links in there. I've made sure that it looks really, really good. It's giving me all the information that I'm looking for. And if you notice as I'm typing, this SEO score bar goes up or down in real time, letting me know if the content that I'm adding is beneficial for the site or if it hurts it. I'm sorry, for the page. Um, it's a really, really cool tool. It's designed to just kind of hold your hand through this process of typing up information. I get that most of you folks aren't bloggers, you're real estate agents. I myself am the same way. I don't like to write, but this really, really will help you kind of narrow down what you should be typing and what content you should be adding to these pages. So this is a really great tool. The end goal, which I always push every person to do, stick to one page at a time and get it to 100%. You should be able to get to 100%. Once you've done two or three of these pages, you should be able to knock one out within 30 to 40 minutes. Um, it's really quick, really easy to do. We have all the tools here that are available to you just like any other editor. And all you have to do is simply slide down the page more. The next thing it's asking is for some images for the Instafarm page. I'm gonna hit that plus button. I've already uploaded a couple of images from uh, New Mexico that I just wanted to throw in here. They're not, you know, and, and like Chris said with the video, it doesn't specifically have to pertain to just that little hyper-localized area. For instance, the Balloon Fiesta is probably a 30 minute drive from Rio Rancho, but I still wanna highlight that because it's a really special thing here in New Mexico. I might wanna highlight the Sandia Mountains, maybe a couple of Southwest properties that are in the area, things like that. I think I have a couple other ones in here. Maybe we got rid of them. Oh, here's a little Southwest one. So I've added some images for it to explain to readers what makes this area so special. They get the idea. New Mexico's, New Mexico's really colorful. It's a Southwest environment. The food's good. Yeah, you might want to post food. Anything that you can think of that really expresses why this area is a great place to live, that's definitely what you want to add. And it can it can totally be fluff, too. It's, um you know, a lot of people kind of get into the um, you know, like creating these pages, like we always float out a, an example of a client. His name is Dustin Brome. He's at searchsaltlake.com. Um, he has like just entertaining writing on his site. And I think that goes a long way in establishing, um, you know, a good rapport with, you know, future potential clients too. Like I see people build out these pages and like, it's just numbers and, you know, that's definitely important to folks. Um, but think about what, you know, you know, if you're thinking about realtor.com, Zillow.com, places where, you know, your clientele are probably looking at anyways, like there is just, or even your MLS, there's just nonstop facts there. So, you know, if even if it's a little informal and it's like kind of fun and you're just kind of talking about what you like about it, I think that goes a long way in establishing and humanizing, you know, yourself versus those, you know, the, those big agencies. So get have a little fun with it. You know, if you're going to spend some time on it, might as well do that. And I, I 100 percent agree with you. And, and the cool thing about this is the more smaller little niche audiences that you're hitting on these farm pages, it's actually going to equal one of those big wins that Zillow or Trulia has for a, a Google search result. Yep. If I'm searching for like so, for instance, I'm a huge sports fan. I love soccer. Um, New Mexico just got their first uh, professional soccer team. That's something I want to highlight in this featured section and maybe add an image of. Um, yeah. And honestly, that's, um, I'll talk about that with blogging too. So remind me. Right. So, yeah, yeah. 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 So I'll highlight the sports teams. I'll highlight a really, and, and again, you need to ask for permission with something like a small town business, like a restaurant. But if they're, if, if you want to highlight a specific restaurant and they're not going to say no to you giving them a link. And more importantly, if you know of a restaurant that's really famous in your area, post the image of that restaurant, you know, and talk about it, explain to readers what makes it, why you'd want to live close to this place. So I completely agree with Chris, find a niche audience, narrow down to it. And that's the thing is some of these areas, especially in the East Coast, you're dealing with a small village of maybe a population of 20,000 people. It may not be a huge city. Uh, Rio Rancho only has, I think, something like 40,000 people in it. So again, it's really tough to, it may be tough to find that information out for yourself or spend too much time creating it. Just go talk to some people, become a resource in your community and make this page reflect that. That's the important part. So for instance, now that Chris brought that up, this is a perfect, perfect example of it. A lot of times in these featured sections, this is explaining to the readers what the feature is, right? So New Mexico is not really known for its schools. It may not be the best place for families, but we have some of the best outdoor stuff that you can do in the country, possibly the world. We have the best skiing. Um, like I said, we've got the soccer stuff. 
Uh, I'm trying to think what else. We've got good Mexican food. You know, the green chili thing is a very real thing here, the balloon fiesta. So even if even if it's in an area that you know isn't really the best in the world for families, there is going to be something that's super important, super local, and you definitely want to highlight it here. In this case, I would probably talk about schools if you live in California, New York, especially if you're a New York agent. They're the number one state for schools. That's something you need to run with. Take off with that. Explain to readers why you want to start a family here. Things like that. Uh, I'm going to copy and paste anything in here. Just, to, but yeah, you can add a feature. You know, um, oops. I'll do that. I'll do that really quick too. I'm just going to enter in some information here so you can see everything change in real time. And just come up with funny little things. Speaking of balloons, didn't you just go up in one, Chris? Uh, yeah, my folks were just in town and we took a hot air balloon ride. <laughs> See, it's a big thing. It's a big thing here in Albuquerque in New Mexico. And again, don't copy and paste this information, but if you do need some content, definitely take some of this information here and just tweak it with your own wording. And I'm just going to pop copy and paste this stuff here. The feature title number two, I'm going to do... I don't know. Uh, right. I could spell today, Calm. Chris is probably sick and tired of hearing me talk about this team. That's all I do every day at work. <laughs> yeah, this is, I mean, I'm going to talk about it a little bit more when we get to the uh, blogging <laughs> section um, and, uh, you know, kind of show you how you can kind of capitalize and blow up on stuff like that. So yeah, so we've Remind added, me. yeah, definitely. So if you notice all this content that I've added is slowly building up my SEO score here. If I scroll back down, I'm going to go ahead and keep going past this. Uh, past this featured area section. And then there's a great extra information in IDX shortcode. So this is any extra content you want to add, which is great. More importantly, I like to, this is where I add my, my saved search results of that I pulled up on my MLS for, let's say houses for sale, you know, a hundred thousand to three hundred thousand dollars in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. So I'll pull my IDX up here. I don't think it'll work just because it's a, uh, it's the demo site, but we can definitely try. We'll go to featured listings. Oops. We'll go to listing report. I think Auburn is the one that works. So th let's pretend that this is Rio Rancho. That's the one that I've created. I'm going to copy it to my clipboard. And when I'm done here, I'm going to exit out. And my computer is going to take a long time for whatever reason. Why is it not letting me use this? That's very strange. Unable to click? Yeah. Mm. You should be able to paste information in here. If you do run into this question or this problem, uh, scroll up to the tippy top and hit this help button, and then you can go ahead and let support know that something's not functioning properly, and we'll take care of it for you. Um, but you, de oh, you did it for a second. Anyways, yeah, you'll paste it in there. <laughs> the footer is the last little section on this Instafarm page where it's designed to do just one last call to action, right? Hey, I'm the best. I'm the best real estate agent this side of the Pecos contact me. I've lived here for almost 30 years. I know this area very, very well. I can get you the best deal in town. If you have any questions, please, please, please give me a call, right? So this is the last little call to action that you can customize with your phone number and a little bit more content about yourself that makes them, you know, really think that you're, you're the one-stop shop to get a house purchased in this area. Now, we would feel like we're done here, but there is another cool little SEO tool, and it's not little, this is a big SEO tool, located right below the content that you're filling out. This is going to be all of your metadata so you can adjust and customize what the data is that pulls up on a Google search result when people are searching for properties in Rio Rancho and your page pops up. So this allows you to do a little bit of a nice little clickbaity stuff, you know, thing explaining to readers, hey, this, you know, you interested in purchasing a home in Rio Rancho, click here. Here's all of the hottest, greatest listings, along with some information to help you make your decision. You scroll down again and there's a focus keyword box. And in this case, and we're going to go on about this in some other areas of SEO, including the blogging, keywords are 
going to really help you make or break if this page lands on a first or second page search result. This is the word or the phrase that Google is going to latch onto to understand, to let the algorithm understand what this page is about. In this case, I'm talking about Rio Rancho. Um, I'm, I don't think I put it anywhere because I copied and pasted stuff. Oh, yeah, I did use it three times. Perfect. So it, it'll automatically register with this cool little gamified uh, meter here how many times I've used this keyword in my content uh, that I've typed up up top. Obviously, I'm lacking a little bit on how many times I've used this keyword. And this is a really, really good time to let you folks know you don't want to do a very long-winded thing like Rio Rancho Homes for Sale because then you have to type this exact thing yep. nine or ten times in this content up top. When you do that, you sound like a robot. The idea is, and this is one of my one of the clients told me this. He goes, "You're writing, you're writing for a robot that people are reading. So you want to make sure that this is you're kind of more gearing yourself towards the eyes who are viewing it. But you also have to remember that an algorithm is the one latching onto this content. In this case, because we're talking about Rio Rancho, I would just keep it short, sweet, simple. That's what we're going to highlight." I've selected it. It's telling me that I need to use it a couple more times, and I bet you the SEO score at the top will reflect that. So it went up to 49%, but it hasn't gone all the way up to 100. And if I scroll back down to this tool, it'll tell me exactly why. I haven't used my keyword enough. I only have 239 words. It's giving me a hint saying that I need to use at least 600, so I need to type up some more information, but I'm totally good on links, <laughs> which is great. That's definitely yeah. The other last thing that I wanted to show you on this is that there is a Google friendly tip section as well. That's going to help you understand what else you need to do on the site. And you, these things you can edit up at the top on the right hand side. Um, the demo site won't let me because obviously it's the demo site, but these will turn green as you're typing information on the right tools. And over time, you'll see this end up going up to 100 percent. Very, very cool. Uh, I'm happy with what I've done here so far. I'm just going to preview it and take a look and see how the site looks or how the page looks and then kind of make some more adjustments as I go. So we'll wait till everything loads up. It's obviously going to pull. And so it's pulling up the Rio Rancho area, which is great. It's going to have the nice call to action. Here's that content that I've typed up about it. Normally, there would also be a little video uh, in this little corner right here that you can click and expand and, and watch. If you have the basic one, it'll just be it'll just appear in the header in the header image. Here's the stuff that I was talking about with the International Balloon Fiesta. Here's the New Mexico United soccer team. Some gorgeous images that I've added. This was the featured image. And then as I scroll down, this is where my IDX information would pop up. So the cool thing mm -hmm. about this is that all of this is built based off of a template you just type up the information and you have this very gorgeous beautiful farm page that should land over the course of anywhere depending on where you're at six months to a year down the line as a really good investment for SEO these are really important we really recommend that when you do get a site if you haven't done these yet do them immediately this is something that doesn't happen overnight it's like it's like a fine wine it ages Google will look at it make sure that the contents correct It'll go through some of your links here and check everything out. And then from there, it'll put you on a first or second page over time. And it'll stay there depending on how long you've had this, this page up. So the longer you've had this page up, the longer that Google's had to take a look at it, the more valuable this page becomes. So we really recommend, again, five to 10 of these that we really, really push for you folks to do. Um, with that said, I just wrapped up Instafarm pages. Do you folks have any questions for me about it? And you can also just, uh, you know, kind of drop those in the chat as we go along here. Um, I know Eric had a, a specific question about getting HTML images uh, into featured areas. But, yeah, definitely just explore that link that I popped in there about HTML. It's very easy to employ once you kind of know, you know, yeah. about it. <laughs> Eric said he thinks he's picking up what you're laying down. So he's smelling, yeah, he's smelling, what, he's smelling, smelling what I'm cooking. That's he's right. smelling what, he's, what you're stepping in, which is great. Um, and let me show you really quickly, Eric, too. Uh, if you notice, there is, I think it's in here, isn't it, Chris? There's a HTML. Oh, right, right here. There's yeah, a text button. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, you click you on the text, text tab. Button, and there you go. Everything that I've added goes into HTML. So if you are yeah, familiar with HTML. Exactly. If you're familiar with HTML, um, you're, you're competent enough to use it, which I will admit I struggle with sometimes as well. But yeah, you can definitely yeah. do that if you, if, you do, if you do have those HTML language uh, skills. So David asked, um, so do you recommend we continue to tweak the pages we have until we get to 100%? 
Yes, um, pick one. Uh, the best way that I'd recommend, that's a great question, David. Pick one, um, and then from there, just get it to 100 and then move on to the next. A lot of people make the mistake of just feeling overwhelmed because of the, you know they're doing 10 pages at once, one's at 50, one's at 20, the other's at 35, the other one's at 88, the other one's at 75. Just pick one, get it to 100, move, move on to the, the list, check it off, and you're done. The only thing with these pages that you do wanna make sure you stay up to date with is obviously census data. If the houses have gone up from $100,000 a year to, or $100,000 to $150,000 from 2017 to now, that's something you definitely wanna go into. Change it up, just check it, set yourself in a reminder on your Google Calendar for one once a year just to make sure that the data is correct and that goes a long way. Google will see that you've made that change. It's more accurate information and they'll reward you accordingly for it as well. Good question, David. Great question. Um, Chris, if you want to dive into blogging and then after that I'll show them the yeah, sure. uh, uh, um, brain farting. Man, it feels like Monday. I'm so tired this week. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, I know how you feel. Vendors. That's it. I'll show you guys the preferred vendors list as well. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah, great. Uh, awesome. Everything was absolutely fabulous there. This is going to be a long one, guys, so buckle up. So um, Chris was talking a little bit about here. Let me go ahead and bring up my screen share quickly. Can you guys see my page here? Chris, can you see my page? Did I lose? Did I lose you, Chris? No, I turned my, I turned my mic oh, off. Okay, gotcha. Okay, great. You're good. Yeah, you're good to go. Cool. So Chris was talking a little bit about New Mexico United and about how he's pretty stoked about it. And it's kind of an exciting thing. And that just kind of brought to mind um, an opportunity that you could totally have um, in terms of blogging and how to promote your site in a way that might seem a little bit left field, but, um, you know, it would be very beneficial in the long run. So Chris is absolutely right. So um, Albuquerque has recently, um, you know, we've introduced New Mexico United. Chris can talk, please interject if there's any details I'm missing, but it's a minor league soccer team and it is really exciting for the city. Um, you know, we've had a minor league baseball team, uh, you know, for a long time called the Isotopes, um, but New Mexico United has like the full support of the city behind it right now. People are going to the games. They have like 8,000 people at each one. It's awesome. It's really cool. And it's also a thing that people are talking about a lot. That is the perfect thing to start to maybe consider, you know, something like that in your area. And not everybody's going to have a golden, you know, silver bullet like that. But, um, you know, writing a blog post about that from a completely informational, you know, like, go Albuquerque. Like, how cool do we have this going on right now? Purely almost like a human interest piece, you might want to call it, if it was featured on a local news station. And not like a, hey, I'm going to sell, you know, you a home also. It's a good example of a way that you can create something that might be, you know, considered quote unquote viral content. Um, so, you know, I think that, you know, this would be a great opportunity for New Mexico real estate agents to be writing about this right now. So, you know, if I was, so say I was gonna write a post about New Mexico United, I'm in the blog section here, I'm gonna go to create new post. You would purely wanna be writing something along these lines, you know, maybe you've got, you know, a new farmer's market opening up that's gonna be, uh, you know, pretty great in the neighborhood. Um, I mentioned this gentleman before, Dustin Brome, but uh, he wrote about uh, Top Golf coming to, I believe, Salt Lake City, or maybe it was a city near Salt Lake. It but anyways, Salt Lake. It, yeah, it was Salt Lake City. He wrote about Top Golf coming to Salt Lake City, shared it on Facebook, and I'll show you exactly what you should be doing with that. And that went kind of like a min it became like a mini viral, you know, kind of thing. And he started ranking really well. So when people were just Googling like, oh yes, Top Golf's coming, let me see about that. Pop open, you know, google.com, Top Golf Salt Lake City. He was ranking like, you know, above like the actual news articles about it. And his he was website- ranking above Top Golf. Yeah, it, his <laughs> website got a ton of traffic about it. So, um, you know, so just writing about, you know, New Mexico United, um, you know, in, uh, you know, Albuquerque, I think would be a great idea. So say you wanted to write a little bit about that. Let me just go ahead over here to YouTube. If we can find, there's probably some, some cool videos that they already have queued up about it. Yeah, there is for sure. <laughs> you guys are going to see all my suggested content, which is backpacking videos, Game of Thrones and Marvel movies. 
So the other thing too about this is that this is a, in in this example, this is a perfect opportunity to do a giveaway as well. You can actually yeah. use this idea for paid per click advertising. Hey, you know, you want the home value of your house, fill it in and you'll be entered in for a drawing for two free tickets to the next home New Mexico United game. Something like that. That's another really great thing to do. Hey, you know, the new farmers market's coming out. There's houses around it if you're interested in one to purchase you know, enter in your information so we can give you a, a list of all the properties within a five mile square radius and we'll give you a free fruit basket from the local farmers there, something like that. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's always a good idea. You know, you can definitely incorporate a giveaway in it in some way, shape or form. Like maybe you could give away, you know, two tickets to the next game or something along those lines. But, you know, it's really easy to write, you know, a kind of a fluff piece, you know, about it and then, you know, start pumping that out there. So, you know, New you know, so how about, how about What's the team? What, what is the team color? Is it just black and yellow? Yeah, black and yellow. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, uh, you know, something like that. We would include some more information, obviously, about it. Um, you know, not going to get fully into specifics. You can include a video. This is their announcement video here. Um, really easy to add video content to a blog post. Um, Eric, you were asking about, uh, you know, can I add pictures into the feature pages on Instafarms? Um, the blog editor you're gonna see it looks a lot different and, and compared to you know just the Instafarm editor, you have a lot more options for what you can do. And specifically, you're gonna get a couple of options that are right off the bat here, add YouTube, add image, add heading. All I did was I found a video, I copied the URL, I went back here, embedded it, boom. And we've already got video content on this page. And then probably down here, you know, you'd continue to write about the success the team has been having so far, how great of a community element it is, how family friendly the games are, how accessible the Isotopes Park is, it's right within town. And you know, just how it's like a great thing, you know, for the community um, at large, you know, kind of moving into the spring season. Um, you know, I would, you know, create my page here. I would probably, oops. And we would go back to the document here. Um, you know, you can edit your permalink. This is actually going to be, as soon as I um, save it as a draft, it's going to be changed to New Mexico United. Uh, let's see, you can mark it as a category if you wanted to. But what I want to do is I just want to go back down here to, so the same way that Chris was editing the SEO of the Instafarm page, you can do so for the blog page as well. So um, you can set a focus keyword. So probably just New Mexico. United would probably be a good one. Um, the SEO title for the page, probably also just New Mexico United. Um, welcome NMU to the Albuquerque area, something along those lines, you know, like something like that. Um, and it's gonna give you the same content, you know, for your blog. So it's gonna tell you your keyword, it's gonna tell you how many words you have, how many links, how many images, all that good stuff. Go ahead and save a draft of this. And then I'm going to go ahead and preview it. And we're going to get a preview here. And also, you know, you can change the, um, you know, the format of the blog pages as well. Somebody on our demo site added this terrible grainy video. I think it's a GIF maybe actually. And yeah, I actually, <laughs> I changed the template out on the homepage for that yesterday when I did my little short video on how to change colors and images. Cause I was like, yeah, this is, it's not winter anymore. It's time to add some pops of color. <laughs> Are you talking, Chris? Did I lose you? What happened here? Oh, that's weird. My microphone turned off there. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're good now. You're okay, good. Okay, cool, sweet. Sorry All I that. said there was that I just wanted to publish it um, in, in, instead of, uh, you know, um, you know, have it as a draft. But anyways, you can see here, you know, I've got my New Mexico United said, you know, we wrote 300 words about how it's cool. Um, you know, we want to, you know, we didn't include anything about real estate in it, you know, probably not, because if you're looking at this right now, like we can already tell that this is, you know, a real estate website. We would probably use a different header. Um, this image is not the best. And this GIF that somebody loaded here, get it a little bit cleaner looking. Um, yeah, and then we'd have content on this page 
and we would see more blogs, it'd be a good thing to start sharing. Um, what Dustin did, and I thought was super effective, is that he just went into Facebook and he found groups that were about Salt Lake City. So buy, sell, trade, you know, use truck cars and trucks, Metro Crime Watch, this would be a good one to join. You know, and really what you can do is you can join any of these groups and then just paste the link to your blog, you know, just go ahead, pop in there um, with a real standard thing. Like, you know, don't angle it as like, a, hey, I'm a real estate agent. Here's what I wrote about New Mexico United. Just be like, you know, very general, like, hey, how about, you know, NMU? Like, they're doing great, right, guys? And then just post the link to it, too. Um, the onboard tools that you're going to see here are going to count shares. So if you're getting a lot of shares on, you know, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff, even if somebody just shares your post or shares the link themselves, um, it's going to be counted here. So you can keep track of it. There's going to be a little red badge will come up that will start counting the number of um, you know times that your blog has been shared by other folks. So just a good example of latching on to, you know, something that's exciting in your community. And, you know, just go ahead and search for, you know, local groups about yours, even if they don't seem you know, terribly, um, you know, uh, relevant. Like, you know, some of these, you know, Albuquerque yard sale, they might have moderation teams that don't want you to post things like that, but there will also be, you know, just more human interest groups like business matters, you know, any of these things. Look for the ones that have, you know, Hispano Chamber of Commerce, you know, that'd be great. Um, look for the ones that have the most members and just post in there. And then if you get, you know, um, you can also sort by public groups as well. Um, you know, the ones that you don't need to be approved to join exactly. So, um, yeah, so post in there, um, you know, always a good idea to be kind of spreading blog content in that manner, um, you know, kind of out and amongst, um, you know, the uh, uh, your community. And I know that um, that's just a good example of, you know, Dustin did that with the Topgolf blog and got a lot of, um, you know, uh, you know, shares about that. You guys probably see it a lot of times like, you um, you know, I know that my folks are always sharing posts from a local radio station on Facebook, and it's really general stuff like, hey, what do you think about this thing that happened? Um, you know, and like kind of try to get a comments um, section discussion going of some kind too. Um, always a good idea just to kind of be using those in a more, you know, less direct sales kind of way. You know, if you're generating traffic to your site, that's really what you want to be doing. Um, you don't necessarily always want to be, you know, engaging in the idea of lead capture because, uh, you know, Google not only monitors, you know, like what you're posting on your site, but also how many people are going to it. So if you get, you know, you know, a thousand visitors over a weekend because you wrote a blog article about New Mexico United and it went, you know, kind of semi-viral in your area, that looks great for you. And it's only going to do good things for your organic growth over time. And even if that's only happening once every, you know, four, six months, um, that is still a good thing. So definitely keep that in mind that it's not just all about, you know, that direct lead capture and, um, you know, Facebook ads, but like just kind of doing fun stuff like this, um, you know, can pay dividends down the line for your business and your marketing efforts and everything else that you, you know, kind of want to be doing with Easy Agent Pro. So just a good example there. Um, the other thing that I wanted to touch on as far as blogging goes is our content library. So, you know, you do know, you guys know that we have, uh, you know, posts that we push out to your site uh, twice a week. Um, looks like we have one here, budget your way to a new home, all this good stuff. But we're coming up into spring. You might want to start posting more articles to your Facebook that are a little bit more spring relevant. Um, that's why we added the content library. So if we click here, you can just go to blog and then click on content library. Um, we have over 300 of our archival posts to choose from. And let's see if we can find some, let's go ahead and search for spring. Let's see if that brings up anything here. Awesome. So as you can see here, we've just got some, um, you know, spring relevant blog articles that you can use. So, um, so for example, prepare now to help sell your home this spring. It's spring right now. If you click use this post, it is going to bring your post up in the editor. I'm just give it a minute to load here. Boom. So it's going to bring your post up here in the editor. It's going to have um, the image and the text 
that was associated with it. Definitely a good thing to do is to check for any dates in here. Sometimes, you know, in the years past, we would have been like, you know, uh, get your, you know, this in, uh, you know, um, you know, experts are saying for 2017, you know, this is the trend, you know, make sure that you kind of update it. You can add more content, very easy to edit anything that's on these. Um, if you just want to use it as is, also fine too. All you would do is click publish. And we are ready to publish. It may not let you if you're on the demo cool. side. Oh, cool, it did, cool. Oh, yeah, oh, it might not too. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, here, let's go back to the blog. It looks like it might have worked. Yeah, some functions of the demo site are limited because it is the demo site, of course. Okay, cool. So yeah, there we have it. No, nope. so this has been published, um, you know, today. So again, you know, um, prepare to sell your home this spring. You know, I think that you could easily post this in any of these yard sale, buy, sell, and trade groups. Absolutely not a bad idea. So um, definitely check out the content library. Look for some more, um, you know, localized content that you, um, or I'm sorry, uh, time relevant content, you know, for spring. There's a, over 300 posts in there. Great idea to be using that content library as time goes on. Um, let's see, do we have any questions? Yeah, we've had a lot of good ones, a lot of good ones. So I'll start off. Okay, cool. With, uh, I did answer some of them, but I just want to go over them with you anyways. Mr. David first asked, how many blogs do you recommend we add per month? And I, um, how many blogs do we recommend that we add per month? Yeah, I told him as many as you can. <laughs> I would say as many as you can. So by automatically, um, we push two blogs a week to your page. So that's eight blogs a month right there. I would say if like, you know, like I said, New Mexico United, very localized kind of thing to write about. If you're doing like maybe one or two of those a month, then you're up to, you know, 10 new pages on your site every month. That's not bad. That's pretty good. But if you can go above and beyond that and, you know, be adding a little bit more content, that's really cool. And I think you guys are going to find that it's fun, too, because once you, you know, get that first one that gets like 15 shares and you get some folks talking about it, you're like, oh, okay, cool. I understand now. I can see how this can be beneficial. And, you know, then you can start writing a lot more and you can start interviewing local people, you know, maybe do a real quick, you know, five question Q&A with a guy that owns like a local lawn care company for like, you know, the biggest mistakes he sees in the spring when people are kind of getting back up into their, you know, home maintenance routines, you know, something like that, um, where you can, you know, backlink to his business and he can link to yours, you know, like, uh, you know, kind of some reciprocal stuff like that. Again, might seem overwhelming to kind of come up with these ideas and doing everything else. Like you guys are busy as heck as real estate agents, but, um, you know, carving out just 15, 20 minutes a day to work on this is always a good idea. So I would say, as many as you can do. Honestly, there's gonna be no penalty for having um, a lot of content on your site. Um, it's, it is only a benefit to be adding as much content as possible. Cool, good good answer. That's kind of what I said too. Uh, Mr. Eric then asked, is there a benefit to using the Insta Farm over just blogging about the area? Um, I would say you can do both. So, you know, say you had an Insta Farm page about Rio Rancho. And like we just created earlier, and then we blogged about Rio Rancho. Um, the benefit that you have there, even though it's two pages, it might seem, you know, to you like, why am I wasting my time doing both? Um, a thing that Google really loves to see and looks for is backlinking. So if you had your Instaform page about Rio Rancho and you had a blog page about Rio Rancho, you could link to your blog from the Instaform page and link to the Instaform page from the blog. And that way you're getting like, you know, you're just kind of growing the web of links that are kind of being, you know, patched back and forth within the website. And that is a good thing because it means that there's a lot of rich content on the site that is, you know, accessible. It's it's just one of those simple things that it doesn't seem like it would do much, but, um, you know, you don't want to have all your information siloed into different pages and having more content is good. So definitely do that. And then we, good quite good answer. We have another one. Um, actually, I just want to show this really quick, Mr. David. On the page that he's sharing right now, this is going to be the page that you, or the back end that you see for your blog and the editor. And if you notice, right next to the green create new post button, there's an edit post. And then the content library is the button you want yeah. to, to get access to those 300 blogs that we've written for yeah. you. That customize. So, so all you would do is you'd log in, you'd click blog, and then you'd see this page. 
And then David did ask another question that asked, do we boost the blogs on Facebook when we post them? I personally would rather see you put that money towards a paid per click ad with a landing page and a list of properties. Um, the, the whole idea is to not spend money on these blogs by doing exactly what Chris T was saying, going to those local Facebook groups, making sure you have permission to post some stuff in there. It's free and you already have an audience of a thousand to 1700 to 2000 people, depending yeah. on which group you're in. So yeah, that's exactly. That would be a better use of using the blogs. Personally. And that's something that we always talk about. Um, boosting posts is not a waste of money, but it's kind of a waste of money when you're talking about most real estate business pages only have, you know, 200 to 500 people that are act, that are likers, quote unquote, likers of them. When you boost a post on Facebook that you may have posted um, from your account page, it only shows it to people that already like it. You're not hitting a new audience at all. So, um, you know, that might be effective if you are, you know, the Albuquerque City community page that has 75,000 people that like it. That might be effective. But for you guys, um, definitely do that money for ad spending versus um you know anything along those lines uh david says how do we do pay how do we do a pay-per-click um i'm gonna get into this I'm gonna yeah we're gonna get a, we're gonna get a link for you man um we're just talking about pay-per-click um we use that interchangeably with ads so we're just talking about facebook ads google ads that kind of thing um eric asks a very good question does it hurt our seo if others have the same content uh no it does not because we syndicate all these blogs out to your site via an rss feed um, and because that is the sourcing of that content, then it will not. So say, you know, uh, we independently built, you know, 45 sites that all had identical content that we created as new pages and then just popped them on that way. That would impact the SEO across the board. But because we're just popping these out to you guys via RSS, um, that does not impact your SEO. Okay, cool. Um, well, that about, you know, we're kind of running up on the end of our time here. Does anybody else have any other questions, um, you know, before we go to the end? So, oh, yeah. Oh, and David, Chris just uh, pasted the link to our YouTube channel there. Step-by-step um, -step guide on PPC ads, be them Facebook or Google. Um, we often talk about ads on these webinars as well. So, if you go on our Easy Agent Pro YouTube channel, um, you're going to find a playlist that's all of these sessions, and a lot of them have to do with Facebook ads. Uh, we have about 10 minutes. I'm going to briefly, briefly, maybe five, spend five minutes on our new tool that we've given yes. you. Yes. Uh, yeah, do that because there is SEO benefit um, to using this particular page. Absolutely. I'm going to navigate to our app section. Uh, Chris brought up a great a great thing, you know, writing a blog about how to properly maintain your lawn in a specific area by interviewing a really, really good arborist or lawn care company. Maybe that's a preferred vendor that you do use all the time for making sure the curb appeal is good on sales um, or you just always recommend them or maybe cut a discount to people who are purchasing a home with you. Um, it may be a gift that you give or something like that. And you really want to highlight this specific guy because he's also helped you out by giving lots of referrals. Um, and you just generally trust the individual to make sure that the property is well maintained and taken care of. We do have a new tool located in the SEO and content section. It's called the vendors app. And when you click this, it's very similar to your, uh, your team page app, or even something like your testimonials, your brag wall. It's very simple to do. You'll have a list of the vendors that you've created. Um, in this case, uh, I'm gonna create a new one just because I wanna, like I said, I wanna do the lawn care company. So when I click create new, it's gonna pull up an, edited, an editing page, very similar to the Insta farm. Uh, and the nice thing is, is that this is, it doesn't have the SEO score bar, but this is also gonna build SEO for your site as well. You're backlinking to their website. Uh, hopefully they would do the same for you. And you're also adding a bunch of new bio information for these individuals as well. So in this case, it's gonna be Mikhail's lawn care. So the contact name. I'm gonna enter in all my information here. The website's www.4w, why not? Lawncarerules.com, I don't know if that's a real thing. Um, you're gonna add, if you have a logo, if the vendor gives you a logo, you can definitely up, you can add a logo. If they don't have one, just find something in Pixab Pixabay. It's gonna be your best friend. Yeah, and Pixabay is just included in your service, by the way, guys. 
This is free of charge. It comes in in your service. Like Chris is saying, you can find some really, really cool little things that you want to use on your site. Let's pretend that this is the logo. I've chosen it. So the logo's there. The category. So this is cool as well. We've took we've looked at every single type of vendor that you folks are using. We've added them here. So it's a very nice categorized system. Um, so on the actual page, it'll show all of the different things if you have multiple vendors for specific things. You know, Cable One, uh, Infinity, there's all kinds of different cable companies that you want to recommend. It'll obviously sit in the category of cable. In this case, I don't know what it would, what would that be under home uh, landscaping? So we did landscaping and then just copy and paste or, or grab some information, a bio about the vendor and, and, and move it in here and you're good to go. Um, once you're done, you'll go ahead and save it. You can also preview the page itself just to see how it looks like very similarly. And again, the content that you're adding here. So obviously there's the vendor's website. It's going to give you a map of where it's located. And then below this is where, oops, below this is where all of that uh, bio information about the vendor would be. Um, and again, you can go to the vendor's page itself. This will have a list of all the different categories that you've created. Just because this is a demo site, it's not gonna let me do that. Uh, but you'll have a nice preferred vendors list area. And then... Oh, did I, did I lose you? Wait, again, it doesn't have to be real estate related, but you can still build out a very, very valuable piece of information for the community and in return generate leads because of it. Um, it's, a, it's just a really cool tool that we've always wanted to have and now we have the technology be, to be able to do it uh, productively. It's a mm -hmm. great way for SEO. Um, again, it's the same thing as backlinking. You're creating that really, really great circle that circle of life, that recycling of going back and forth between the sites. So make sure you buddy up with some good vendors, have them kind of, uh, you know, highlight you on their pages and vice versa. Show them the page that you've created for them. And it's a win win across the board. Yeah. So David has asked, how does it help us to add vendors? What is the benefit? So, you know, it's the, the thing that we always push here at Easy Agent Pro is the idea of content marketing um, as a benefit to you. So. Um, you know, it's the idea is that you want to create, you know, like with your Instafarm pages, with your blogs, you want to create something that, um, you know, forges a connection with somebody visiting the site. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to be a little bit nihilistic and be like, you know, everybody's just looking for listings. Like they want to see the listing as fast as possible. You know, we don't want to see any more of this content, but time and time again, our agents that have taken a little bit more time to create community centric pages. Um, community centric videos and, you know, kind of establish a very bona fide and, um, you know, concrete connection with the community around them. Um, they've proven to be our most successful agents and the folks that are getting, you know, the most done. And a vendor page is just great, you know, so it's like you are always going to have folks asking like, you know, hey, you know, thanks for helping me buy the home. Like we need a little bit of yard work, you know, that kind of thing. They're going to be talking about it. Um, you know, you can just, you know, share this link with them. Um, you know, with folks, uh, you know, your vendors that you're showcasing on the page, um, you know, hopefully there'll be a little, uh, a little bit of a reciprocal effect there. And, you know, you can be, you know, getting re referrals that way as well. And it's just a, a sharp tool. It's going to look great on your site and, you know, just kind of be a good, you know, it's going to be a boon um, overall. So, you know, spending a little bit of time to set that up and get it added as a link to the header menu um, is just a good idea. And that's what Matt asked, where on the homepage does it show up? So Matt, once you create that page, um, then you can use the uh, menu editor to actually add it to the header menu. So, and to bring it up to, yeah, so you can do it in the, in the menu editor, you'll be able to pull it up there. Um, you can also, let me screen share really quick and show you where you can grab the URL, which is quick and easy as well. When you're on the, the vendors app, there's a button that says, see my vendors page. And this is the link that you'll wanna copy over into your menu. Quick and easy done. Um, you can then create a little menu item. Maybe you want it to sit right here. So what I'll do is I'll go here. I'll go to settings. I'll go to menu. I'm going to scroll down to custom links. I'm going to paste it in there. Add it to my menu. Now that I've done that, if I scroll down, it should be there. If I save the changes and I go to view my site. There is now the vendor's guide, the vendor's link right here. And I, I spelt it wrong. Vidors is how you say it in Rio Rancho for sure. But yeah, you obviously spell it correctly, but this is where you'll be able to view that information. 
um, or add it rather to your, your guide. If you did do a spelling error, you can hit the little pencil and change it. Um, Easy to edit. Yep, done, one and done, make it happen. Um, the re Another good reason why we have people do these pages, for instance, obviously you folks all have an MLS board and that's your bread and butter for generating a lot of leads um, by creating pay-per-click advertising, things like that. For Matt specifically, this is a good example. We have a client who uh, lives in Australia and obviously Australia, I don't know about New Zealand, but Australia doesn't have an MLS board. So his idea was how can I generate leads in my community by not showing properties until they come to me, right? That's how, that's how it works. It's really tough to be an agent overseas. Um, what this guy did is he actually created, before we even had this tool, he had created, I, there's probably over 400 or 500 different vendors or different th lists of information that he's added to that site. Uh, yeah, so New Zealand doesn't either. This is, the, the vendor list is gonna be bread and butter for you guys if you're not using an MLS board because you're becoming a resource in the community. Um, and his name's Eric, and Eric himself decided to do a list of every single thing you could possibly think of when it comes to being a citizen in this uh, the state of wherever he was in Australia. So, um, you know, how to, how to properly maintain property tax, uh, water rights, everything you can think of over there in the middle of, uh, you know, the outback where, I mean, it is the wild west of, of the east. Um, he had content and legality stuff about that that really helped people make the decision on if they wanted to live in that specific state in Australia. So, and that's his bread and butter. It's SEO friendly. So all that content he added, people are searching, you know, what are my rights when my neighbor starts taking my water from my well, his real estate website pulls up and it may not generate a lead right away, but six months or nine months down the line, when that guy realizes that that dude's stealing water legally, he may want to move and that guy might want to, you know, he'll use Eric as his resource to find a new property. So it's always a really great long-term investment strategy to add that kind of content to your site, even though it may not be an immediate lead generator, it's still going to help you no matter what. I know that was a long-winded uh, conversation. <laughs> long-winded, yeah. I mean, I think we both got a little bit long-winded here. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah. All, I mean, all this stuff is like the, you know, we get so many questions. It's like, what do I do with the site? And it's like, you know, um, if unless, uh, you know, this is a total Hail Mary and you need to get a lead before the end of the next 21 days in order to, you know, close on a home so that you can, you know, keep going, then, you know, this is the kind of stuff that you can be doing with your site. And it's very fun. Um, I mean, you might as well have a little bit of fun with it. We're all going to be replaced by robots in 20 years anyways. You know, so uh, robot real estate agents, you know, so just, you know, get out there, just write a little bit. And again, being a resource to, in your community. I mean, there's a guy, there's so many really great selective stories that we have of clients who have just kind of found a niche audience, targeted them with some really great content and then just ran off with it. And may, Dustin's a good example. Um, Karen's a great example. Uh, who else? Corey Dunphy is a great example yep. of soccer stuff. We've got, like I said, Eric in Australia is a great example. There's another guy uh, who did a really great SEO page about Christmas lights for December. The dude's on the news every single year now as the real estate agent who knows Christmas lights. He gets a free spot for his advertising business on his local news station every single year, multiple times in the month of December, and he generates thousands of leads because of it. So, yeah, of course, Ken. Awesome. Glad that glad that you find it interesting and that you can help it. And please, if you guys create all these pages, share them with us. Email yes, us. Please. No, it's, it's really, honestly, we, we make a thousand phone calls a day. We, we write a thousand emails a day. And our favorite emails or phone calls that we get are the ones of people saying, hey, I did what you said to do. I tried out the Instafarm pages. What do you think about it? Those are our favorite ones. Oh, yeah. No Those question. That we can help out with the most on top of it, specifically for Chris and I, because we've been doing this for so long. So please, please, please share, share in the BeatZilla group all the success you've had with some of these pages as well. Heck, yeah. So David asked, the leads I'm receiving from my website don't have a phone number as the way to require it. It varies on the lead source, um, it varies on the form, the call to action. A lot of, there's a ton of templated landing pages that you have to require information like that. Um, unfortunately, they'll still come in as partial leads. It still is something that we haven't had where it forces the individual to give you their phone number. That's a good idea though, I like that. Maybe a new template might be coming out soon. Yeah, and there's, um, you know, depending on what the lead source is, uh, definitely definitely reach out to support, David, just to see, um, because even if you're using, um, you know, non-required 
uh, lead capture, like, you know, log in with Facebook, that kind of thing, we still have the option to ask for a phone number. Um, and so that's not a bad idea. So, you know, if you're getting a lot of leads, um, but they just don't have phone numbers, we can try to activate that for you just to see if we can, you know, you might get fewer leads as a result, but um, the ones that you have will then have phone numbers. So um, yeah, definitely reach out to support. We can help with that. Also, I'm going to enter in my email. We've got about four, 20 seconds left, um, and then we've hit the hour buzzer. I'm going to enter in my email here uh, just so you have it, and you can feel free to ask me any information. We do have upgrades available as well for your site where we take care of this content for you. So to quite, you know, ask about that. You can find it in the upgrade button on the header menu as well. Bo show. With that said, thanks so much for joining us, guys. Yeah. yeah, that was a great one. Thank you for hanging out with us. A nice long hour. Feel free to email us with any questions you have. Hit the help button in the upper right hand corner. That'll connect immediately with a support agent that can help you out as well via chat. Or you can always email support at support at easyagentpro.com. Thanks, guys. Take it easy.